and this is Farooq A. Peru, an Islamologist from Pataling Jaya. Farooq, last week or earlier this week, Hannah Yu, I think, is in the next constituency to you in Pataling Jaya. Mm -hmm. but she's in Suban Jaya. That's right. She's also the youngest um, female assembly uh, speaker, rather, <laughs> in the Slango Assembly. Now, there was some trouble concerning her, or rather, uh, somebody made a police report against her. Is that right? That's right. I mean, this is the latest incident in, in this episode where a senior lecturer in the University of Uttara, Malaysia, Mr. Kamarul Zaman Yusuf, made a police report against Hana Yo for the contents of her autobiography, Becoming Hana Yo A Personal Journey. So what was the problem then? What was the problem with the book? Well, according to uh, Kamaru, he, he said that when he read the book, it drove him to have a love of the Christian God. And this obviously goes against Malaysian law because under Malaysian law, it is forbidden for someone to preach uh, a non-Islamic religion to Muslims. Was she preaching? No, no. I mean, uh, if you read the book, there is nothing there where in, where in which she invites Muslims or anyone to share her faith. It is rather her account on how uh, she, her faith was her inspiration uh, to her life journey. So, so this is how it all began. The book, he, him reading it. And then making the police report. Well, no, it actually, well, the book firstly was written in 2014. Okay. Uh, and now three years <coughs> out of the blue, Kamarul Zaman reads it and says, okay, well, Hanayo is a hypocrite. Why? Because she is mixing her religion with her politics. Uh, and uh, DAP, as you know, Hanayo is a speaker for DAP. And DAP does not mix religion with politics. So Kamaro said, oh, okay, Hana Yo, Hana Yo is a hypocrite then. But this is her, a book about herself. It's nothing to do with politics, right? Or well, party politics. Well, precisely. And, uh, you know, I don't understand how Kamaro can make the jump from personal account to preaching at Muslims. I mean, this has no logical sequence there, you know? What is his background then, this Kamarul Zaman Yusuf? Oh, he's what a lecturer he? in, in political science in the University of Tara Malaysia. Yeah, he did his thesis on PASS. Okay, and he was reading this book. Well, why? Is it part of his reading material for, for his course? Or was uh, it just a book he picked up in the bookshop? I don't know. I mean, if he picked it up three years ago, he has taken a very long time. Maybe he was reading just one page at a time, you know? So, uh, finally he has digested the book and realised, oh, oh. Now I'm feeling that I want to become a Christian. And God knows how we <laughs> arrived at such a conclusion. <laughs> 2014, and it's now 2017. Yeah, we probably read one page a day, I guess. Is there another reason, do you think? Oh, it Before could be, you know, a, a little bit of timing, you know, just to press at the buttons of the Malays. You know, the Malays will be like, oh my God, someone's trying to convert us to Christianity. We need to be extra careful now. Look at DAP, they're turning us into a Christian state. Such paranoia. But do you think the Malay public will believe him? See, the Malay public is not a homogenous entity. There are layers and layers. Mm. Uh, some of them are quite fundamentalist. They are very protective of their religious identity. And if they believe that Hana Yo is trying to convert them out of Islam, Certainly, DAP will be demonized. Doesn't this also mean that their faith is very weak? One should think so, yeah. One should think so. I mean, if you have strong faith in your religion and mm. someone comes and preaches at you, you should have some answers, especially for Malay Muslims who have gone through 11 years of indoctrination. I mean, come on. I mean, you, you're telling me you don't even know your religion? 11 years? Why, why the 11 years? Well, uh, 6 years in uh, primary school and 5 okay. years in secondary school. Okay. Now, what is Kamal Rol Zaman's background, apart from being a, a lecturer? Has he had any achievements or any, any noteworthy achievements? None that I can. I mean, he has written a number of articles, uh, mainly in support of BN, as far as I can see, yeah. Okay. Now, the issues that you mentioned 
fanning the flames of religious sentiment. Why is this a problem in Malaysia? Well, you see, in Malaysia, Malay Muslims have been uh, under the system of protectionism. Uh, I myself, you know, when I was younger, uh, whenever I, you know, I actually met uh, a pastor when I was playing football, and this pastor didn't know I was a Malay. So he was sharing with me the gospel, and I was quite interested to listen. Because, I, I mean, I knew my religion, and I knew it was a different religion. But when he realized, oh, this young boy is a Muslim, I can't preach to him. And that made me wonder, why can't he preach to me? I mean, at most, I can think about what he's saying, right? Mm. But no, in Malaysia, we have a protection <coughs> system. And that is a system which inspires fear. And no religion should be born out of fear. So this is what, uh, 10, 20 years ago? 25 years ago. 25 years ago, and they were feeling it then, so it must be worse now. Oh, definitely. Now, with the religious scholars uh, demonizing Christians, claiming that even the Christians, when they use the word Allah, it becomes very confusing to Muslims. <laughs> it's getting worse, indeed. So, uh, how do we get out of this mess? To me, there is only one drastic answer, secularism. We need to remove religion from the public sphere, allow people to embrace whatever religion they want, and then it will be a level playing field. After all, Muslims preach to Christians every day. They have, literally have organizations which preach to Christianity, uh, Christians. Mm -hmm. Take, for example, Dr. Maza and his IQ Malaysia, a term which is very loosely named. Um, he's raising money. And on the website of one of his associates, Rosaimi Ramli, it says that the money will be used for preaching. So what, what is he preaching and who is he preaching to? Obviously, he's preaching his version of Islam and he's preaching to the Orang Asli, apparently, according to the website. So why is that okay? Why can't we talk freely about religion? Why is it wrong for Malays to listen to other people's religion and it's okay for them to preach towards others? So you're calling for total secularic secularization? I believe that is the cure, yeah. Do you think there will be many Malays who will oppose this, this view of yours? Oh, very much so. So then what happens? Well, I... Are you going to persuade them or make or encourage them? Well, in my opinion, secularism is very Islamic. Why? Because the Quran, chapter 4, verse 58, tells us that when you judge between mankind, judge them equitably. So if you want people not to preach to you, you shouldn't be preaching to people. If you want to preach to people, allow them to preach to you. What do you expect them to do? Are you expecting them to listen to the gospel of Islam and suddenly say, yes, let's embrace it. And then when they ask you a question, you say, oh no, you're insulting Islam. That's Zakir Naik style religion. Yeah. Um, so, he reads a book and he feels he's been converted. Mm. Christmas time, some of us are singing carols or the shops are playing those Christmas carols. Are we going to be converted? I don't know. I hope he wears earplugs when he walks past those shops because, you know, he might suddenly listen to jingle bells and think, oh my God, this is beautiful. Shall I just join? You know, this yeah. is... Uh, <laughs> this is a lecturer, by the way. Or, so, or when people say, God bless you. Or... Oh, no, no. They, you, unless they say, Allah bless you, then you can't wish them back. Maybe. I don't know. <laughs> you were talking about uh, pastors just now. now. Yes. What happened to Pastor Ko? Pastor Raymond Ko has disappeared. Yeah. Uh, the police have not said anything. And we fear the worst has happened to him. Yeah. Now... What do you think the government is doing about that one? Try and relate it to the Hannah Yo thing. I, do you fear for her and stuff like that? I, I do feel, uh, I mean, I wouldn't say that that would actually happen to her, but I do feel that Kamarul Yusuf has exposed Hannah Yo to fanatics. In making that police report, that accusation, some fanatics, not Kamarul himself, mm. but some fanatics may think, oh my God, this woman is trying to convert. Muslims, and that he, he didn't think before he did it. Oh, I don't know. I don't know if he did or not. But the point is, whatever he did was wrong. It was taking advantage of a situation, and uh, stretching the truth, as far as I'm concerned.
Mm. So, um, what's your advice to Kamarul, if you had one? I believe Kamarul should uh, retract his report mm -hmm. and understand that non-Muslim Malaysians are allowed to express their faith. If they wish to tell the world how connected they are to God and to their religion, that's their right. They didn't start you know, distributing the books to Muslims saying, look, your Islamic religion is pointless, follow this instead. They didn't do that. Yeah. So he may have an audience with the extremists in Malaysia. I, you know, I, I don't believe the extremists would even read Hannah's book, but the extremists would certainly get flamed. Wind of this. Yeah. 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 So talking about extremism, uh, a few days ago, David Teo yeah, was uh, slapped on mm -hmm. the face when, mm -hmm. at a forum. Mm by an uh, actor-comedian called Matt Moore. Oh, Matt Over. Oh, oh Matt Over, yeah. Yeah, so like when you see. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. So, and now the extremists are saying that uh, they want uh, the film producer, uh, Nitio, to apologise. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. He was the one who was slapped. Now, what have you got to say about all the extremists, the Sulaiman himself? Now, this is the thing which the sense of entitlement gives you, you know? When you, you call yourself Tuan or, you know, uh, ha is, pamagang ha istimewa and all that stuff, you basically think that any kind of criticism is a, an attack on your Malay dignity as such as it is, you know. Yeah. And when yeah. this happens, you know, even though Manova himself did not give any kind of racial indication, he just said that he slapped David Teo because David Teo was being impolite to the Prime Minister. And then he said, well, you know, I didn't hit him with a fist. I actually just hit him with an open hand, as if that makes it better. And I think he also said, I wanted to teach him good manners. So I wanted to teach him good manners, exactly. So do you slap somebody and that is the way you teach people good manners, by slapping them? Only if you work in a toughest school. <laughs> But not if you're a civilized human being, no. If I was uh, Matt Over, and I used to admire him really, I love Pima Pima Tang too, you know, back in the day. If I was Matt Over, I would have stood in front of David Teo and said, excuse me, sir, you're being polite, please address the Prime Minister in a more polite tone. But that should have been the job of the moderator, not a member of the audience, because then we might have a slanging match. The moderator and another actor of you know of whom I'm a, a big fan, Roshan No, apparently said Dirni Kurangaja or he is actually rude, referring to David. Okay. Hence the moderator was not really very very moderate. Yeah. And you you know, the job of a moderator is not to insult people or be oh, exactly. for them. Exactly. Yeah, he should have taken his command uh, his his comments and his, in his stride and then right. Just, uh, right. Because now we don't even know what the question he asked, David Teo asked. Mm, no. Everything is lost because of that one incident. Well, maybe that is what the intention was all along. Maybe. I don't know. I mean, to me, uh, the Prime Minister should always stand or sit in a forum where people can go and openly ask him questions. Mm. And being the Prime Minister, being in command of the government, he should have logical answers. This is not too much to ask. This is a basic function of government. If the Prime Minister is hidden by his, his uh, entourage, then how on earth is the normal member of Rakyat going to get across to him, his point? I mean, only uh, I think today I read there is a family of six people living under a flyover. So what's the point of talking about TN50 if we have people living under flyovers? Yes. You know, these are yeah. just pie-in-the-sky ambitions which detract us from the social problems at hand. Yeah. So what's your advice to um, Sulaiman Yassin? My advice is, I mean, please don't say that you're trying to correct David. There, were, there would be a dozen other ways for you to do so. What you did is contravening to our polite Malay manners. You know, Malay people are nice people. We are not such people who will slap other people out of nowhere. It's mm. ridiculous. And to those Malay ultras who are demanding that David Teo apologize because it's not part of our culture to do it, I'd like to ask them, is it our culture to slap people? Because it's against the law. Mm. Why don't you tell uh, Sulaiman Yassin 
or run over to apologize. No, that you actually approve. But asking David Teo to apologize, that's okay. That's but, double standards. Yeah, but then you see, David Teo himself has said he wouldn't press charges. So people are looking at it very oddly. Yeah, yeah, I mean, I, you know, that's inexplicable to me. I don't know why. Uh, I think for the sake of justice, we need to bring this man to book um, on man over. We need to tell him, look, we can't have people slapping other people, whoever they are. And have you heard anything uh, from the moderator? What's he said? The moderator has been silent thus far. Yeah. I've not heard from the moderator. Yeah, because it was under his watch. I mean, he should have controlled. Well, exactly, everything. exactly. But then you see, there's also the silence from the prime minister. Shouldn't he also be saying something about Indeed. this violence in Indeed. the public? Indeed, yeah. he should have repudiated this violence and dissociated himself from it. I mean, he's obviously a peaceful man. He would not do something like this himself. Mm. So why is he uh, silent about what, uh, when a person yeah. does this seemingly to protect his dignity? He should, he, should, he should say, I'm sorry, my dignity is not under threat <laughs> by, you know, by this, this man David Teo's words. And certainly you don't need to slap him. Yeah. A final message then for the extremists in Malaysia trying to stir up trouble using any excuse. What, what have you got to say to them? Stop using your paper thin excuses. The rakyat are very aware of what you're doing. And uh, if you expect David Teo to be within our cultural paradigm, please also ask my over to keep within our legal sphere. Anyway, thank you very much and I hope you enjoyed the session with us about Hannah Yo and also about the slapping incident in Putrajaya. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Barrett. Thank you.